People tell us every week that our information has helped save their life. If you agree that this is helpful information, please like, share, and most of all, subscribe. Because nothing makes a channel like subscriptions. So let's get to one of the shorts. I mentioned something coming from David Sinclair earlier. This article was featured in Time Magazine. It was published in Cell magazine, the science magazine, on January 12th. Scientists have reached a key milestone in learning how to reverse aging. You remember one of Sinclair's most recent things was he actually reversed blindness in a lab rat doing something very, very similar to what he's talking about here. So this is just the next step in terms of Sinclair's epigenetic and genetic activities on reversing aging. So he wrote the book Lifespan, and we'll talk about that book lifespan in a few minutes i loved it i did a series of about nine videos on it and we'll talk about some of that as well to get deeper into some of the details he did something interesting with the Yamanaka genes. Yamanaka is a researcher who won the Nobel Prize recently for discovering three genes which control the speed of cellular aging. Sinclair sped up and slowed down the aging of mice using Yamanaka gene stimulation. Now, how did he stimulate or turn on and off a gene? Well, he tagged these genes with an antibiotic called doxycycline. Adding the doxycycline caused reversal of aging for the mice. Removal of the doxycycline caused the aging to restart. He's now doing this with human cells in vitro. Now, what does in vitro mean? It's not inside the person. That would be in vivo. Now, he says the first application of this might be human aging diseases of the eye. Why? because you can inject into the eye itself. Sounds painful, doesn't it? But there's an opportunity there. Now, this is really involving more epigenetics than pure genetics. Epigenetics, if you go back to the old-fashioned library that had nothing online, it was all books in the library, and I think it was called the Dewey Decimal System. It was a way to find a book. That's what epigenetics are. You may hear the scientific term, the methylone. Why? Methylation is the major use, the major technique of the, quote, librarians of our genetic system. And there's some groups, I did a couple of videos on how to look at the methylome and looking at groups that are really going deep in terms of helping us understand the methylome. Or, in other words, how our body goes in and finds the gene that it needs for a certain activity. Now, that may sound a little bit esoteric. You don't need that. Let me remind you of something that we all need and use on a regular basis. It has to do with fat adaptation. So, if you decrease carbs, if you start doing a significant fasting, both of those help you start relying metabolically for energy on fat. Well, if your body is in a mode of having eaten carbs three or four times a day or more often, it's never going to get to burning fat. So the enzymes, the proteins that are involved in burning fat just don't get used. So, if you start going on a keto diet, you know, you've heard the term keto flu. What's going on there? Well, your body's not used to burning fat because it's been burning carbs. So, you go through a phase to where your body's not doing so well at burning the fat that you're giving it for fuel. How does the body deal with that? Well, it goes back and it says, look, we need the proteins involved in burning fat the cells start going back and saying, okay, we've been using carb burning enzymes. We now need to switch over to fat burning enzymes. And then the librarian, the epigenetics, the methylone kicks into gear, finding the proteins, the enzymes that are involved in fat burning, looking those up and starting to stimulate those. So now you start beginning to understand this is a process they find after your genetic librarians, your methylome, your genome finds the right genes and locates them. Then it's got to start forming proteins. So you start having an access to a good combination of the enzymes needed to burn fat. So again, this is a multi-step process. And as you begin to see, it's actually pretty neat that keto flu tends to only last a few days. You get some early start on that. It does take weeks to get fully fat adapted. So, a little bit of a side note on epigenetics.
and why they are so important. Even if you think, man, that sounds esoteric, it's not. It's very practical. People are using it all day, every day. David Sinclair wrote a very interesting book. It was called Lifespan. I did a series on the book. The series includes videos on all the major components. There were nine videos. The mechanisms of aging, epigenetics, like I said, there's several videos on that. The information theory of aging, that's something that David Sinclair came up with. And his point was, genetically, we've got that library, but he used a little bit of a different analogy. His analogy was, well, wait a minute, that information is sort of like information stored on a, a vinyl record. And then you start getting scratches as we start getting some errors in our genetic code. Then you get more and more errors, and it's sort of like a ball of yarn or a plastic bag of yarn that a cat has started playing with. You get these cell nuclei and you get pieces of the genetic material, the DNA. In the beginning, one or two problems are not that much of an issue, but as you get more and more challenges there, you get more and more problems with aging. Now, that is something different. The biggest theory and mechanism behind cellular aging has been the one of mitochondrial decline. You hear several people talk about that. That was actually started in the 60s. Then you hear people talk about diabetes. So, now wait a minute. Which of these is the real issue? All of these are major components of how our body ages. So, David Sinclair, for example, has said from the beginning of his career, I want to develop the anti-aging pill. Personally, I don't think David's ever going to develop one pill. I don't think anybody's ever going to develop one pill that's going to stop aging. There are too many mechanisms. The mitochondrial mechanism, some of the epigenetic problems, some of the telomere length issues, the information loss, diabetes in and of itself, one of the major killers, whether it's causing aging or not, it's a major killer. So again, you've got way too many different mechanisms of aging to have one pill just cause all of this or one pill that's going to fix it. So he also covered in the book the work of Walter Longo and others. And Longo, again, is very deep into diabetes and prediabetes and its impact on aging. He talks about something like zombie cells. Zombie cells are cells that have aged into senescence, senility. And they're sort of like a grumpy old senile cell. They won't die. And here's the problem with that. They sort of infect other cells around them. So you remember we've talked many, many times about autophagy. One of the most important things that can happen with autophagy is its impact on zombie cells. Now, one of the problems is that even autophagy doesn't completely uh, impact all zombie cells. So it gets deeper and deeper and more and more complex. So one of the other things that he talks about, diabetes and prediabetes have a special role, not just in the human species, but in many species, multiple species, ranging from some types of worms to insects, all the way up to humans. So we make use of that fact to use a lot of different laboratory species for research in diabetes and prediabetes. So there you go. That's David Sinclair's new work on anti-aging using the Yamanaka genes.